Hi everyone, my name is Justin Odisho, and in this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to blur or censor out people, objects, or faces in Adobe Premiere Pro. So to begin working, I've got this example clip on the timeline. And this is what our finished result is going to look like. So starting with our unaltered original clip, I'm going to head over to the effects panel, and I'm going to search for my effect of choice. Now you can actually use a couple of different ones in this case. You could just use your standard Gaussian blur and just blur things out completely. But to give it some, that classic censored effect, I'm going to search for the mosaic effect, which you can find under the stylized video effects folder and click and drag that onto my clip. But if we look over in our effects control panel on the left hand side under that new mosaic effect that we just added, we can actually adjust a few things. So we can adjust the size of the blocks, the larger the block size, the clearer you can kind of see what's underneath them. So you can choose something, I don't know, like 40 and 40, or depending on how blurred you want it to be, lower or higher. And what I'm going to do is add a mask, just to mask the certain area that I want. So you can add a few different types of mask. You can add an ellipse or circular mask by default. You can add a rectangular mask by default and adjust those points around. Or you can draw your own mask using the pen tool. So for the first example, we're going to create one mask to blur out the guy's face. In this case, faces are round, so I'll just use the circular mask. So starting at the beginning of the clip here, I'm going to drag the mask over his face, and if I need to adjust the size, I can adjust the size with these points. Now obviously for most clips, the objects are going to be moving around the frame. You can see as I move over, oops, there you can identity revealed because he looks around and the camera moves. So we're going to add a few simple keyframes to follow his face around, and it shouldn't be too tedious of a tracking job. So I'm going to head over to the mask path section, click on the stopwatch icon to toggle animation, and you'll see that it'll create a keyframe. I'm just going to start at the very beginning, just to make it easy. And I'm going to move over just a little bit until I see he moved a little bit. And then I'm going to highlight that mask just so I can see the blue circle again, and just move it over so it's still fitting his face. And repeat this process a couple times, move over a couple seconds. And if you can't see the blue circle anymore, just make sure you're in the program window, not the reference menu, and just move it over. So it really shouldn't take that long. Just gotta get big major moves like that. So you can see every time I create an adjustment and move along the timeline, it's creating a new keyframe. So all of those are going to linearly, smoothly progress between each other, which should follow his movement pretty well. So if I play that whole thing back, I could see that it follows him pretty closely and I don't have any slip ups. However, if I did, I would just go back and adjust them. A couple other things you can adjust with your mask are the mask feather. So you can make it more or less feathered. Obviously you don't want to reveal the identity by feathering too much. You can actually make the mask lower or higher opacity if you want to animate it somehow. And you can expand the mask or contract the mask a little bit. Also, depending on how you're working, you can invert the mask. So everything except his face is blurred. I suppose that could come in handy in some situations or effects. And we already went over the block size, which is kind of like the strength of the effect. So we've successfully blurred out his face. That was one simple example. But what about if we want to blur out the bottle as well? It's a little bit more complicated. It's thinner and he moves it up and down pretty quickly. In this case, I'm going to create just another mask on the same effect, but I'm going to use the free draw pen tool and I'm going to start around here, and we're just gonna follow as we go along. So make sure you have the stopwatch icon turned on so it can capture the animation, and then we're just gonna repeat the same process, moving along maybe a little bit more carefully this time. Make sure you highlight that mask and then adjust the points. I'm using the rotation tool to kind of help me out. You can also adjust the points or even click and add new points if you wanna adjust the shape a little bit and it will do a good job blending in between each keyframe, the different shape. All right, so once you have a general outline of the keyframes, you can play it back and see if you missed any spots. For example here, maybe I wanna add another keyframe just to make sure I really track the movement accurately. But with basically one run through on the keyframes and a couple adjustments, I've censored out the object and his face completely without really messing up anything else in the frame. So you can use this on license plate, people, faces, objects, whatever, but that's a basic instruction on how you mask out objects. If you enjoyed this video, leave a like on it below, check out my channel for more tutorials, and subscribe to the channel so you don't miss any of my future videos.
Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.